tried to get away from, and the Lord wouldn't let me get away from it. And so, I believe His way is best. Amen? Amen. So, I want to preach this morning <clears throat> about the place called hell. And I believe we need more preaching on hell. Hell is a, a topic that uh, many churches you go to today, you'll never hear it even mentioned, uh, much less a message preached on it. But I believe that uh, we need a reminder of this awful place of torment that awaits the lost, all Christ rejectors. And uh, thank you, young man. Uh, this is a message that needs to be preached, amen? amen. And so, we'll look in, in Luke chapter 16, and if you're able, uh, if you stand with me as we read the text this morning, Luke chapter 16, beginning in verse number 19, <clears throat> down through the end of the chapter. The Bible says, there was, certain, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. And seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And said Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren. That he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them... Uh, from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. I preach this morning on the place called hell. Let's pray and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts today. Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessings on us today. Lord, we, are, we have rejoiced in the truth. We rejoiced in the fact that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Lord, uh, for those of us who are saved, we are very thankful to be so. Lord, we know we didn't deserve salvation. There's not a one of us who, uh, in this world who ever has deserved your salvation. But you gave it to us as a gift, freely through the work and merits of Jesus Christ. Father, we're thankful for that. But Lord, uh, we're not... To, we don't want to assume that everybody in this place is born again. Uh, Lord, uh, I believe that churches are filled all over this world today with people who are in church, but they are not in Christ. And if the trumpet were to sound today, they'd be left behind. If their lives were to be uh, taken away today, they would spend the rest of their existence in this place of torment, the fire, and... Uh, uh, Lord, this place called hell, which one day will be delivered into the lake of fire. And Lord, uh, Father, you make it clear it's not your will uh, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God, I pray that there's one in this place today who is unsaved, uh, Lord, or maybe they're unsure. Father, it's not our 
our goal this morning to make saved people unsure. Uh, but Lord, if there's someone here who's unsaved or unsure uh, of their salvation, God, I pray that that would get settled today before we leave this place. God, we pray that your spirit would just hover over us now and speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be focused on your word. Lord, we know that where you're at work, the devil is sure to be at work as well. And he's going to try to distract our minds and hearts from this message. But God, I pray that we would stay focused upon you. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, for those of us who are saved, Lord, I pray that we'd get a real uh, understanding, a biblical understanding of this place. And may it touch our hearts and cause us to be more uh, mindful of the souls that are around us, Lord, that are headed to this awful place. God, our family members and friends and neighbors, people in this community. Lord, there's even people uh, probably in this building, maybe not in this room, but uh, in this building on their way to hell. So close to the truth that can make them free and so close to the salvation that's offered in Jesus Christ. But Lord, if they turn away, Lord, they'll forever uh, spend uh, uh, their, uh, their time in, in uh, torments and separated from you, the only one who loves them the way that you do. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us today. We need you today. Lord, fill me with your spirit. Help these words to be the words that you ordain, that you say. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you, Lord. Save those souls uh, that are lost in this place. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. <clears throat> been well documented, well stated that Jesus preached more on hell than he did heaven. And uh, though heaven is a wonderful place and we're thankful for it, it is not the only eternal resting place of souls. Uh, there's no, there is another place and there is only one other place that souls will spend eternity uh, and that place is called hell here in our text. And uh, we read in the, in the, uh, the end of Revelation how that at the last day, the great day of judgment, that all the souls that are in hell will be uh, taken up, they'll stand before God and give an account. And those who are lost, uh, those who are in that place called hell, they'll be cast with hell into the lake of fire where they will forever be tormented. And I know this is not a popular message in our day, but it's still true. Amen. As we heard in Sunday school, we need the truth. I can remember uh, hearing messages on hell as a little fellow. And I remember going home scared to death that I was going to drop off into hell. He said, well, that was, that was so awful that a little child be so afraid. Uh, there are things to be afraid of, amen? amen. And this place is one of them. Uh, the place called hell. Here we read of a rich man. Uh, the Bible does not give his name, but however, it does give the name of Another man in this, uh, two other men in this in this uh, story. Well, actually, three. I forgot Moses. Uh, so we know these are actual people that he's talking about here. The first thing I want us to see about hell, the place called hell. Hell is a real place. Hell is a real place. Many people try to uh, they try to do, to uh, explain away this passage. Saying, oh, it's just a parable. It's just something that the Lord, uh, a story the Lord told to, to kind of get their attention and to teach a truth. Uh, but you'll never find this called a parable in the Bible. Amen. It's not a parable. Anytime Jesus spoke a parable, he was clear to tell us it was a parable. This is not a parable. This is not a make-believe story. Right. This is not, to, this is not to some man's imagination. Hell is a real place, and there are real souls in that place at this moment while we're gathered here in a, in a comfortable place enjoying the, 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 uh, the blessings of the music and the preaching of God's Word. There are people in hell this morning who are suffering because they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hell is a real place. And uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses would have you to believe that this is not a real place. And their their uh, their uh, uh, reasoning, and uh, you, boy, you study that out in the Bible. Reasoning is never a good thing. Uh, the only time it's good reasons when God reasons, or when you reason out of the Scriptures. Amen. But man's reasoning always leads you astray, and they reason, well, how could a God of love send any of his
his children to hell. My, my answer to that is he doesn't send any of his children to hell. Amen? Amen. Uh, God's children go to heaven. Amen. And uh, the children of the devil go to hell. Now, here's, here's you say, preacher, well, if that's, if that's the case, why are you preaching this? If God's children go to heaven, the devil's children go to hell, then why are you preaching this? Because it is possible to go from being a child of the devil to a child of God. Amen. 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 That's why we preach this. Amen. Because God wants you to be saved. Amen. 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 This place called hell, it's a real place. This man, he was a rich man. And uh, he didn't go to hell because he was a rich man. Amen? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, you say, how do you know that? Well, there's another rich man in the story. Did you know that? <laughs> Abraham was a very rich yeah, man, the Bible yeah, says. Yeah. And he's not in hell, he's in heaven. Amen? In paradise. Right. And so he didn't go to hell because he was a rich man. He, he went to hell because he refused the, pre, uh, the, uh, the uh, preaching of God's word. Amen. You see it very clearly in... in uh, and, and verse 29, when uh, the man wants uh, Lazarus to go back and, and tell his brethren about this place, verse 29, Moses, uh, Abraham saith unto them, they have, unto him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Yeah. You know what he's saying? If God's word isn't enough to convince you, man's word surely isn't going to convince him. Yeah. He was a rejecter of God's word. He was a rejecter of the price that was to be paid for him on Calvary. And Jesus Christ was going to be taking his place, not, not too far in the, in the future when this story was told. Jesus Christ paid for the sins, past, present, and future when he died on that cross. But those who had faith in God's revealed word, uh, God sent them to a place called paradise. That's where we find Abraham and Lazarus, and I believe that paradise is now in heaven. Amen? Amen. And, uh, but they were in paradise at this time because the blood had not been applied yet. Amen. Amen. But as soon as that blood was shed, Jesus Christ went into heaven. He offered that blood upon the mercy seat Amen. in Amen. heaven. Amen. Did you know there's a tabernacle in heaven? Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. Christ offered that blood on that, on that mercy seat. God's uh, justice was satisfied. And he received into heaven all those who died in faith. Amen. Yes, sir. The, the rich man could have been one of those. But he wasn't. He wasn't. It was all about this life to him. This life was more important. He didn't think about the things of, of eternity. Or he at least didn't act upon the things of eternity. Right. It reminds me of that rich man that, that we read about in Luke chapter 12. He was the things are going good. And uh, he's, he got looking at his, at his barns, and he said, man, they're all filled up. And he said, well, what are you going to do, soul? Well, soul, let's build bigger barns. Yeah. He got busy building bigger barns, was going to, but that very night, God required his soul. Amen. And what a fool. Yeah. I'll tell you, God called him a fool. And, and you're a fool if you only think about this life, and you pay no attention to what's going to happen in eternity. You understand, eternity never ends. That's right. This life is like a vapor. appears for a little while and vanishes away. Yeah. Amen? But eternity lasts forever. You're a fool if you're not thinking about the future. You're a fool if you're not realizing this place called hell is a real place. And Christians, I believe we need to live in the light of the reality that hell is a real place. Amen? We can get caught up in this world too and forget there are folks who are outside of the grace of God who need the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ or they're going to go to this place. Amen. You know, I, I find something that's very, it, it's disturbing to me. It used to be we'd go to prayer meetings and, and uh, prayer meeting night, uh, we'd take prayer requests and people were asking for their lost loved ones to be saved. And, uh, and uh, man, almost the whole prayer time is about lost loved ones, neighbors, friends, co-workers. And, and, and just with, with tears in their eyes, and they, they pray and pour out their heart to God to save their, their lost loved ones. And now you go to prayer meeting, it's about your sore toe. And, 
You know, my back's hurting, and you know, pray, pray. I need, I need a better job, and all of this stuff. And listen, there's nothing wrong with praying for those things, but there are more important things. The eternal souls of those around us, our children, amen, our grandchildren. They need the Lord Jesus Christ because hell is a real place. They, uh, a few years back, they come out with this this book, and then they made a movie. Uh, heaven is for real. Remember that? And I do believe heaven is real. Amen. I do believe that. I don't know about all what happened to that kid. I don't. I'm not God, so I don't know. But I know this. You can make a movie about heaven is for real and you can make millions of dollars. You can sell a book, heaven is for real, make millions of dollars. Not too many of them out there saying hell is real. That's right. That, that won't go anywhere in this day and age because that's uncomfortable. Brethren, sisters, it's a reality just as much as heaven. Yeah. And we need to be out there, uh, we need to be, first of all, we need to be praying. And then we need to be pleading. We need to be preaching. We need to be uh, actively witnessing for the Lord because hell is a real place. You're here this morning and uh, and you're in church. That's, that's a blessing. I'm glad you're here. I'd rather you here. I'd, I'd rather you be here than anywhere else. Amen. But just being in church doesn't mean you're going to heaven. Right. Just being born in a, in, a, in, a, in a preacher's home doesn't mean you're going to heaven. I was born in a preacher's home. I didn't get saved until I was 17 years old. You know what? I, ever since I remember, I can never remember a time that I did not believe that Jesus died on the cross. I always believed that because I was always taught that. I always believed He rose again. Some people say, well, that's salvation. No, salvation, believe. The word we use, believe, is not really the word believe in the Bible. That's right. Yeah. Believe in the Bible means to trust. Okay. I always understood. I always believed up here that Jesus Christ was the Savior of the world. I can ne Honestly, I can never remember a time I did not believe that. Anybody else here like that? You can't remember a time you did not believe that? Okay, church brats. You guys are church brats, aren't you? Amen? I always had that understanding. But when I was 17 years old, I understood Jesus Christ was not just the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ would be my Savior. Yeah, amen. If I trusted Him as my own personal Savior. It involved turning. I had to turn. I'll tell you what I had to turn from. I was I was in church and me and my brothers, we sang with mom. And uh, I had even done some preaching. But I wasn't saved. You know what I had to turn from? What I had to repent of? I had to repent of my pride. I had to repent of my good works. I had to turn from that and trust Jesus Christ alone yeah. and what He did for my salvation. Amen. That was a real place. <clears throat> See, number two, that hell is a restless place. A restless place. You see this man in hell, verse 23, it says, In hell he lift up his eyes. And I like the fact that that word, I mean, I don't like, but it's good to know the, the fact that, that word lift, that is present tense. Or I think it's present perfect. Is it present perfect tense? Like it's continually present tense. I don't know what that means. I'm not an English major. I'm trying. What it's saying, it doesn't say in hell he lifted up his eyes. Because guess what? He's still in hell. And he's still lifting up his eyes. In hell he lift up his eyes... Being in torment. Torment. <clears throat> a lot of people believe hell is going to be a party. All my friends are going to hell, so I just want to go to hell and have a party with them. Yeah. You know, there's not, there's no way possible. And, and this is why, let me just, bear with me just a minute. This is why I believe God gave us a book and He didn't give us a movie. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Because man, they, they, I think in, in trying to de depict hell, they have put men's heart at ease about hell. 
And, and listen, I'm all about getting the gospel out uh, in many ways as we can that's good. Amen? I believe these people trying to de depict hell in a movie, yeah. they've made man kind of, oh, that's not so bad. Right, right, right. There's no way that we can even fathom how awful this place is. That's right. There's no rest there, day or night, the Bible said. They had no rest. You ever got to a place where you couldn't sleep? Lay awake at night, couldn't sleep? Anybody ever had that happen? Isn't that awful? Yeah. I mean, all things, all sorts of things start going through your mind. And the people that have insomnia, my heart goes out to them. When you can't sleep, I mean, your mind will play tricks on you. It'll mess you up. Your body needs rest almost as much as it needs water. This place, there's no rest here. There's no rest. There's no let up. Let me just, uh, let's just read a, a scripture that de describes hell a little bit for us. You say, preacher, I know this. I know you know it, but we need to hear it. Look at Matthew, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 9. These verses, not only do they tell us the awfulness of hell, they also tell us the gravity of sin. How serious it is to be in bondage to sin. Look at verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. I just believe the Bible, amen? Yeah, amen. I believe when it says it never shall be quenched, that it never will. Right. It never will. Verse 44 says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. He makes this statement uh, two times in this passage. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The Bible describes hell as a place where there are worms, and they say, "What is the, what is the?" Uh, or it actually makes it three times here. What is the significance of these worms? Well, you know, when when the, when they plant a body in the ground after you die, they're going to put your shell, your body, in the ground, and it won't be very long. And those worms, there'll be worms to come and start eating. Eating that corpse. That's what happens. And uh, uh, if it's not sealed real good, amen? Mm -hmm. uh, but there's worms in you. Do you know that? Yeah. Do you know you're full of worms? Yes, sir. See, aren't you glad you came to church? Maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I made you feel good today. <laughs> I believe in hell those worms are going to be continually consuming you just like the flame is. And yet you'll never go away. Your existence will never end. You're going to have feelings in hell. They're going to feel it. They're going to feel the flame. They're going to feel the worms. Uh, it's going to be a place where there is no rest. Uh, the Bible says the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever. Ever get smoke in your eyes? Whoa. Ever get in a place where there's so much smoke you can't find air? Say, so, preacher, you're trying to scare me. Yes, you are right about that. There's something to be scared of. Smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever. No break. Hell is a restless place. There's torments there. Number three, I want you to see that hell is a remorseful place. In verse uh, 24, the man calls out to Abraham to have mercy on him. That he'd send Lazarus, and he just wanted, he just wanted to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool his tongue. That's all he wanted. 
That's all he wanted. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, now he is comforted, thou art tormented. There's one verse, or one word in that verse that really stands out to me. It's the word remember. Remember. Yeah. Maybe one of the greatest torments of hell is going to be the fact that you're going to remember. If you're here this morning, you're lost. You'll remember this time. If you don't turn to Christ and get saved, you'll remember this. You'll probably think of this time over and over. Or other times when you were warned of this place and you just turned a deaf ear because it was uncomfortable, because you didn't want to hear that, because, I, you know, that, that's a, that was happy things. Or maybe because your life is so good you can't even imagine that you could ever get to this place in life. And so, for whatever reason, you turn a deaf ear from it. You did not give ear to the Word of God. You're going to remember that. You're going to remember lost opportunities. You're going to, I believe you're going to remember, he, he, he thought about his brothers, his brethren. And he probably thought of times when maybe his scoffing the truth influence them. You're going to remember those times when you went home and said, well, I just don't know why. Why the preacher have to preach on hell? And we're trying to have a camp meeting here. Yeah. You don't preach on hell at a camp meeting. <laughs> don't you know the unwritten rule? One day it'll be, you'll be filled with memories of times that the Lord reached out to you and things could have been different. Yeah. Remember. Remember. I don't want to see also that hell is an unreachable place. Verse 26, it says, Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. I don't understand really how this man could have seen Abraham and Lazarus. They were afar off. Somehow God gave him the ability not only to see them, but to speak with them. So even though they were far off, they must have been close enough for the rich man to think in his mind, Lazarus can get to me. Or I can get to him. Somehow I can get out of here. But he couldn't. Abraham said, there's a great golf fix. You can't come over here. And we can't get to you. He was able to see Lazarus. It makes me think and wonder, I don't know all what's going to happen in eternity. I know Isaiah 66 talks about you'll see the forms of them that rejected God in torment. I've heard preachers say we won't know who they are, we'll just see them in torment. Because there's no tears in heaven, God's going to wipe away the tears. Right. But you know, I've often thought this, there are going to be tears to wipe away. I wonder if God is going to let us see, just for a moment, the 
those ones we were too busy to talk to, too busy to warn. Those family members we were too afraid of offending them to really tell them and warn them about that place. And I wonder if they're going to be able to see us. It won't stay that way for eternity, I, I, I don't believe, but I wonder if for a time they'll be able to look over there and see you. How come you didn't warn me at this place? I wonder if they're going to be able to talk to us. They could hear. I know things are different, but it sure gets you thinking that. Close enough for him to call out, close enough for him to see, but he couldn't get to it. That's torment right there. That's torment. Deliverance just right there. And he can't get to it. unreachable place. You know, I think some people, because they have bought into this new new age idea of who God is, they put their hope in that somehow at the end God will somehow change his mind. Because he's a God of love, he'll just accept everybody in. Well, I'll get to heaven because, I mean, surely, surely God will be so gracious as to do that. Man's reasoning. But I wouldn't stake my life on man's reasoning. I put it on God's word. And when he says the smoke of their torment ascendeth forever and ever, that's what I'm going to believe. Yes, sir. They yes, say, well, how could God do this? God's a God of love. We were all heading there. Yeah. It's His love that spared any of us. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. I understand this is not a pleasant message. It's not pleasant for me to preach. But I do believe that God's had me deliver this message this morning for a reason. There's so many things that we could point out from this passage. We could point out what the rich man had in hell that we need in our churches. He had a burden. That's right. He had compassion on the lost. He had a belief in repentance. Amen? Yeah. He said that if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. He knew they needed to repent. That's better than most churches. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Charles Spurgeon said one time got up to open the service and he opened it up with this I wish you all would go to hell <laughs> how's that for a Sunday morning greeting yeah. he paused and he said for 30 seconds maybe we'd have the burden this man I know it's easy to get upset at lost people because they're living like lost people. Sure. Amen? What the, what the, the way the society is going is grieving to me. Yes. Grieving. And their sin is just... It used to be people were ashamed of their sin. They're not ashamed anymore. They can't even blush. Sure. It's right in your face. 
and you get this militant feeling of we're going to take our nation back. And we forget, we, we, we miss sight of the fact the only answer for our nation is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The only way the, the hearts of men change is through the power of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God yeah. unto salvation. Yeah. It's the only thing that would change people. Would to God we were as we were as as concerned about the souls of men as we are our society. Would to God we loved the souls of men as much as we loved our country. Yeah, amen. Sir, I love that. Might make the difference. That's right. Say, oh, this world's on its way to, to destruction. I know it is. The Bible says it is. But you know what? We might be able to rescue one, two, or three. If we'll stay to, to God's word, preach the truth, Amen. Yes, and love people. Yes, sir. Somebody, old preacher, told me this one time, a long time ago, when I was just starting out preaching. He said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Amen. Brethren, I'm all for Second Amendment, but that's not what we're preaching. Do that. Amen. I'm all for all of these things that will improve our country. But you know, they're just patches. Right. What people need is Jesus. Yeah. And they need to be warned of this place called hell. Because yeah. what good does it do if you reform somebody and you make them your political ally and they still die and go to hell? Yeah. What good have we done? That's right. Heavenly Father, Lord, I've done my best to deliver this message this morning. I do not know the hearts of men and women and young people here this morning. It's my desire, Lord, that someone here that's unsaved, Lord, that you would help them to see through your word the seriousness of their predicament. But Lord, help them not to put it off. The devil's great lie is that you can do it tomorrow. You can worry about that later. God, we're told in your word to not boast ourselves of tomorrow. We don't know what a day may bring forth. Father, I think of this uh, this meeting just a couple weeks back that I heard of a man, saved man there, praying for his wife and daughter to be saved. They got saved, and he died the very next night. Lord, we don't know. He wasn't planning on dying. We're thankful that he knew you and that he's with you now, but. Lord, none of us have the guarantee of another day. There have been many, many people who have heard messages like this on this topic. They've walked out the doors never to hear another one, never to have another opportunity to turn to Christ. Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today, I'd say, Dear God, please draw them to yourself for salvation. Father, have your will away now, I pray in Jesus' name.